May it please the court, my name is Peter Radzulowski, and I represent the respondent, Amy Bauer. Today, this court, this court hears a vital issue that hinges on our definition of equal protection. It comes with the same degree of significance as the landmark cases of the past. The issue is whether the Defense of Marriage Act violates the 14th Amendment by denying the fundamental freedom of marriage to a minority group, gays and lesbians. Amy married her partner, Michelle, in Massachusetts. Unfortunately, three days after they returned to their home in Washington, D.C., Michelle was diagnosed with breast cancer and died six months later. Michelle had failed to complete her will before she died, and because of the Defense of Marriage Act, Amy was not recognized as a surviving spouse. Their marriage was no different than any others, despite being of the same sex. Yet because of this law, all of Michelle's assets, including the couple's home, passed to Michelle's sole surviving relative, her father, from whom Michelle was estranged with because he did not approve of her sexual preference. On appeal, the D.C. Circuit overruled the District Court's decision to uphold DOMA, declaring that it violated the Equal Protection Clause. It is well settled that prejudice against discrete and instant minority groups calls for heightened scrutiny. As a threshold matter, the Court should review the history of discrimination against the group and its political power to determine whether that group falls into this category. Gays and lesbians clearly do. Firstly, the prevalence of sexually motivated hate crimes demonstrates a deeply rooted pattern of discrimination against the gay community. Second, in terms of political power, the gay community is surely a minority. Currently, they possess no greater power than members of some racial and other minority groups, to which this court has applied heightened scrutiny. Third, because sexual orientation is central to a person's identity, it is an immutable characteristic. Therefore, the court should apply strict scrutiny, but at the very least, it should apply intermediate scrutiny. Also, DOM is a classification based on gender because it defines marriage as a legal union between one man and one woman. And therefore, at minimum, intermediate scrutiny is appropriate. In order to pass the strict scrutiny test, there must be a compelling purpose for the enactment of DOM, and the law itself must be the only means of achieving that purpose. To pass intermediate scrutiny, DOM must, have, must serve an important government interest, and the law must be substantially related to achieving that interest. DOMA does not even pass intermediate scrutiny. First, it does not serve an important government interest. Stating that marriage between man and woman is tradition is not enough. In Varner versus Bryan, this court said a tradition cannot be an important government objective when it's nothing more than historical classification. Even if fixing the birth rate and violence problem may be considered as important purposes, DOMA is not substantially related to achieving them. While some studies conclude that children raised with a biological father have lower educational attainment and a greater probability of engaging in violence, there is no evidence to suggest that banning gay marriage is even a remotely rational means to fix this. Thus, the law is both over-inclusive and under-inclusive. As in Barnum, the evidence does not show how the best interests of children of gay and lesbian parents are served by the ban. Similarly, the exclusion of gays from marriage does not benefit the interests of those children of heterosexual parents either. In short, the state has no valid justification for denying gays and lesbians marriage. In Hernandez v. Robles, the New York court was mistaken in applying the rational basis test. First, what we're dealing with here is a matter of sexual orientation, which is at least a quasi-suspect class. And furthermore, DOMA plainly discriminates based on gender. Thus, at minimum, intermediate scrutiny should have been applied. Moreover, while in Hernandez, the court argued that the ban on gay marriage was not a classification based on gender because it applied equally to men and women, it uses the same argument that the Supreme Court debunked, equal application. The classification in our case is indistinguishable from that of law, except based on gender. In both cases, the law determines who someone can or cannot marry based on classification. The opposition's facts are weak and baseless. What's left unspoken is religious opposition to gay marriage. Religions are free to define marriage between one man and one woman. However, people are entitled to equal protection of the laws regardless of others' religious beliefs. This country was founded upon the principle of separation of church and state. It is this principle which made America the land of freedom and opportunity. This is a critical time in our nation's history. It has always taken the courts some time to recognize some fundamental principles that it stands by today. Now, before us, we have yet another case, another landmark case that will affect the lives of millions of Americans. This is it. This is the time when neither prejudice nor tradition should dictate the law. 
Therefore, Your Honors, I ask that this Court affirms the D.C. Circuit by holding that DOMA violated the Equal Protection Clause. 